Yes. Tell me your background. Uh, my background is I was born and raised in Easton. We were never what you would call uh, wealthy, but we never missed a meal. We always had a house. We always had heat and the roof didn't leak. Uh, I went to Easton High School, graduated in 59. And when I start thinking how many years there is between now and 59, I get shudder every once in a while. <laughs> but a lot of those people that I grew up with are still around. There's John Hurt, for instance, Brad Watts, Tommy Hill. A lot, a lot of those guys were in Easton High School about the same time. Yeah. And we all knew each other. And consequently, we still all know each other and, and don't mind kibitzing as we go along. But uh, I... I went to the University of Maryland for a couple of years, and uh, my wife and I got married in 1961. That'll be 62 yeah. years this coming Labor Day, which again amazes me that I even lived that long, let alone be married to her. And she's she's still happy. Uh, I don't know how I've done it. Went to work for Waverly Press. They helped finish the the college, and uh, stayed there for 41 years. So from there. Uh, I decided one day that uh, I really didn't like the way Easton was headed and I thought I could do something about it. I'd like to put my stamp on it, if you will. Uh, my mother was town manager at the time and she went to work there in, in 1943 and retired, I think, in 85 or 86. She told me I'd lost my mind. Stay out of politics. You don't want to do it. It's, it's not your bag. Do something else. I said, nope. I'm going to try it one time. And we ran against the incumbent at the time, and I won the first election by two votes, which was about as close as you're going to get. And I uh, have ran eight times, nine times since then, and been successful eight, all except for the last election. I felt pretty pleased about that because people would thank you for uh, being attentive, for answering questions. It didn't matter whether it was pick leaves up or fix a broken sidewalk or whatever you needed to do. We had stressed with the town workforce that a smile doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't hurt you to say uh, thank you or yes, sir. Be a guy that's going to answer questions and people can rely on and right now, with the town force that we have, we probably have that instilled as well as any time in, in history. What was the motivation for you to run for council president? What? I guess af after the last election, I could tell you, I, I started talking to the town engineer, and he was lamenting the fact that they really didn't have a lot to do. So I said, well, we'll cure that real quick. And I started listing projects that we had, and I was up over 50 and still going strong. So since that time, we've gotten some of those done. There have been some others that have started that a person with past experience getting into this uh, would have a, a heads up as far as getting things done. They'd know the background and what have you. Mm. And that's where I thought I could really help. Uh, Megan and I have a great working relationship we don't always agree, but uh, at least we can agree to disagree and, and work things out. We don't don't get up there and punch each other in the nose or anything like that. Uh, and that that was the big thing. We we had projects on the table that were the envy of towns all over the the uh, peninsula, and uh, we really needed to get those things done. What I found interesting when I actually read the charter was how. Uh, sparse the job description was for council president. What attracts you to being uh, the council president and how do you think that could show up uh, in, as you conduct these meetings? I, th I think, uh, Dave, that the mayor's job in the town of Easton is slowly but surely getting out of a part-time job. At some point in the, in the years to come, you're going to have a full-time mayor or at least a, a really busy part-time mayor. And that, that's just the way it's become. It's, it's a part-time job that I, I used to go in every morning, but I wouldn't stay all day because sooner or later I was going to get phone calls I didn't want to answer. And uh, 
you, you went in to make a presence, you went in to do what you could do, you answered the questions on the table, and then you left. Uh, that, that was true with the previous mayor, Gene Butler, who, who was a, a real people person, and George Murphy, to some extent, uh, really turned the, the part-time job into a full-time job. I had, had a lot of experience with the fire department, had a lot of experience with the Elks and, and uh, the Kiwanis and some of those clubs. So I kind of knew the underlying uh, tone that was in the town and what people expected to see and what they were expecting to see out of their town uh, management. And that's where I thought I could fit in because uh, I, I really did like the idea of working with people. Uh, I don't enjoy being yelled at. I don't enjoy being, you know, led down a wild goose chase, but if somebody's got a legitimate problem, I really do enjoy working with them. And I think in most cases, we were able to get some resolution to that. That's the kind of mood I'd like to take over with the uh, council president's seat. Uh, not so much that I'm going to change the world, but I can be a good stand-in for Megan if she decides she wants to take a vacation or she has some emergency. And also, there's places where she's not fully versed that I've been there before, and I can help out. What would you do with the legislative role that you you would be seeking? I, I think right now the 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 council president's role is is uh, going to be mostly legislative because the the workforce reports to the mayor, and she has the control over that. But I think as far as getting uh, a priority order for projects, as far as getting people involved, and I think as far as uh, setting a business plan, if you will, for just about every project you've got and making sure those goals are met. Uh, you can do that through the meetings, the ones that are publicized to the town, and you can also do that by getting up and going out and visiting the sites and seeing what's happening and what what resources are needed and where you can help out. One th thing that took place was uh, Popular Hill Farm. It and did. Uh, that, that uh, was a wake up call, I think, for this community. What was your, your take on that challenge? Uh, the Poplar Hill, I think everybody had an opinion on that going into the last, last election, but we have spent a tremendous amount of time and dollars on uh, water drainage, uh, condition of our streams, condition of the rivers, and so forth in, in and around Easton. And to do anything that involves the critical areas uh, process and would possibly af affect the work that's already been done just didn't make any sense at all. Uh, Easton had five stream restoration projects on the books. We were doing the third which happened to be out behind my house on Bridge Street and the high school football field and so forth. But that led directly into the Tread Avenue also. But we, we had projects on the table that were already being affected by Poplar Hill. Uh, why mess up the process that had been going on? So leave the critical areas alone. If the people were interested in, in uh, parkland and open space, okay. We would put uh, uh, walking trails in, we could put picnic areas in. Uh, it didn't have to be a, 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 an established athletic field with lights and bleachers and cars and so forth. And also, when you look at Poplar Hill, it's, it's right in the area now where the rails, the trails has come to a, to a screeching halt until they figure out how to come across 322. You've got the 200 acres right alongside of it that's been purchased by the, the state and turned over to the town of Easton for management. That's going to be uh, open space. You've, you've got all kinds of, of issues with uh, uh, parks that need to be settled. And my comment to the developers was, put your open space in. Whatever money you've had to uh, create amenities in those parklands, Put that money into an escrow account. Let us use it to benefit other parks around the area. We constantly hear that there's a lack of park space on the east side of Route 50. Okay, well, let's use some of that money to fix up uh, the parks over there. 
And then when we talk about housing, uh, how many do you want? What types do you have to have? Are you going to put a paramedic substation in there with the fire department? Uh, no commercial needs to be out there, I don't think, unless it might be a bank or a post office substation or something like that. But uh, we, we don't want to commercialize it. And then you've got a very important issue with Oxford Road and what the traffic output's going to be on that road. Where does it empty into? Uh, is it at Polly's Hill? Would you be near them with an entrance? Uh, how about the Easton Club? What's going to happen there? And there's a whole lot of questions that need to be asked, but I found more of those being asked uh, kind of on the side and not so much in an open session where everybody could get a chance. I just did a story the other day where uh, it was determined that over from 2019 to 22, Eason had a 45% increase in rental costs. Um, For sure. And so, you know, the pressure's on. Uh, and, you know, there are many different schools of thought about affordable housing. Uh, some of them are that, you know, yes, it's not affordable, and so go, you know, live in Ridgely. Uh, and, and even if you're, you know, a fire department guy, what, what's your take on all that? When I look at affordable housing, first off, you, you look at the Housing Commission of uh, Talbot County. That's staffed only by people from Easton and St. Michael's. You've got to bring Oxford in. You've got to bring Trap in. Everybody's got to share in, in this issue. It's a problem for everyone, so let's all get together and come up with a solution. Uh, I, th I don't understand why the Housing Commission is working on projects in other towns when they certainly have enough work to do in the town of Easton. Uh, where are we going to get available land that we can use? It's got to be within the town limits because of the utility issues. Uh, everything seems to want to be pushed into to the eastern coffers because of eastern utilities, which, bless their heart, I would, I would tell them they, they do everything they do is, is finite and, and done very well. And when the town of Easton and Eastern Utilities go after a project by themselves, uh, they usually win because they're kind of an unbeatable unbeat uh, group when they work together. And that's the way, it's, way it should be. That's the way it's set up. And it's an Easton, uh, it, it's kind of un, a, a rule in Easton that we try to make the uh, housing ownership uh, not so much rentals, but own your own place and take care of your own place. And to do that, we found that the problem uh, wasn't so much finding home ownership people, it was helping them fix up the houses that they live in. For years, they've been in these places and mm -hmm. they needed new windows, they need doors, they need roofs, mm -hmm. uh, they needed everything. And we were able to set up a program that, that provided low, very low interest loans to these folks to make the, the uh, necessary repairs, get them back on the rolls and, and make things happen. Uh, so we, we've touched the surface. I don't think the, the affordable housing issue is going to be solved by putting up individual owner-occupied homes. I think you're going to wind up with a mixture of the homes, you're going to wind up with townhouses, maybe some condos and apartments and stuff like that. What else are you concerned about uh, about Easton? Um, what uh, comes to mind when you think of the priorities that have to take place in the next couple of years? What what I see coming coming down the pike is uh, the police department and the fire department recruiting that has to be done. Uh, when I've done the budget, uh, we we used to never scratch anything else that had to deal with uh, training or safety equipment. We always provided what they needed. But the question is now, if, are, are you really respected as a police officer, a school teacher, a fireman or anything like that? Not only in just a, an emergency case, but on an everyday basis. Do you speak to them when you go down the street or do you walk across the street and get away from them? Uh, <laughs> I, I say the, the police officers now, I have to keep checking records to make sure they're 21. <clears throat> 21, I guess that's a question of me getting older and them 
staying the same age or, or getting uh, older at a slower pace. Uh, that, that has to be done, and we, we have to be, get the respect back in where it belongs. And does that take some, some work with the, the governor and his staff and above? Sure. Uh, I was talking with one of the local judges the other week, and uh, they, they have the same problem, uh, getting that respect back into the, the yeah. business. One isolated <laughs> thing that came up last week, which I could put in the category of a micro issue, but it was kind of interesting, uh, the, the conversation around the charging stations. The Eastern Utilities uh, contract is completed, and you know we all know that there are a lot more EV cars than there were you know when this problem program was started. How, how do you feel that's evolved, and you know what's the history behind that? That uh, project was put in place with uh, a, a private company helping Eastern Utilities out with the the project just to see if it had any uh, 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 ability to be used in the town of Easton, and invariably. When you get into uh, doing things better on the utility line, you start running competition with uh, private business. For instance, Royal Farms with their charging stations and some of the others. So we couldn't really continue running the, the one down on Brewer's Lane with uh, no charge, no cost. But how do you take a gift and then you start charging, charging dollars for it? There has to be some, some uh, meeting of the minds there to get that worked out. And now that charging station is going to be near the proposed uh, dog park that they're working on. And I can just imagine that, that people are going to park their cars there and charge them and take hours and it, it'll be an issue. So it, it's not something you just say, well, tomorrow we're going to charge 10 cents a minute or something like that. But you've got to figure out what are you going to do with the waiting line? Have you got enough facilities there for people that are going to work? And then what is the actual cost that you can pass on to the customer? Yeah. Um, Closing comments? You said it a hundred times that Easton is just a great place to be and, and to raise a family. It's got the amenities that you want. If you don't see them, say something, and I'll bet you somebody will take that ball and run with it. But when I look at the, the candidates that are, that are running for the office of council president, I look at, at Robert Willie as the only one that's had management experience with 150 plus people. So I'm used to running that, that many people. Poor, poor choice. I'm used to managing that group of people and getting them headed in the right direction. And I'm also the only one that's had experience with a $22 million plus budget each year. So I, I feel like that, that uh, experience counts. It's uh, got to be good for something. I mean, you've got to hit the ground running, and you can't have two or three years to worry about this because you're going to fill out the existing balance of the term that, that Megan left, left open. So I feel that I'm the, the most qualified candidate in there, and that's, that's my closing comment. Thank you, sir. Is that okay? And thank you for running.